was built in like 1968 or 70. Yeah, it's got that vibe. <laughs> Very secure, this is. Oh, anyway, there it is. Are you ready? Holy crap! Is that a beta mat? Yeah. Okay. There's your prize. You want it. Holy moly. What else is in here? Those are worth a lot of money. Are they? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because it's Apple and it's old. Well, here it is. Uh, you just saw me pick it right out of the storage room. Uh, and here it is home. It's a Sony SLO 1800 Super Betamax VCR. It's a Super Beta Hi-Fi, so it's got the Hi-Fi stereo. This was a commercial grade machine, which you could probably tell just by the look of it. And this was made in 1986. X-Broadcast, uh, according to the Mercury Hour Meter, it's got 9 times 200, 1800 hours on it, which isn't terribly high. Um, presumably the head drum would have been rated for a thousand hours, so unless this thing is on its second head drum, then we could potentially be dealing with worn out video heads, but I don't even know if this thing turns on. I brought it in from the cold about 20 minutes ago, so it's still a little bit cool. Look at that, we got VU meters, not only for audio, but for the RF coming off the tape as well. This was a high class machine. Not really meant for broadcast use, but once again, this came out of a community television station. Uh, I think this came from Fundy Cable 10. So just like Umatic, which is also not a broadcast quality uh, video format, Umatic SP is, but not standard Umatic. Um, a community television station, lower budget, um, they would have had no problem running something like this. Although it probably didn't run shows. I don't know what a station that already had a U-Matic machine and later a Betacam SP machine. I don't know what they would have a Super Beta machine for. Maybe to play movies over the air? I, I don't know. So I'm really, really, really hoping that this thing actually by some miracle works. But I'm not going to be at all surprised. If it has an issue, I'll be really bummed, but not surprised. Uh, I want to get the cover off this. I want to see what this thing looks like mechanically before we plug it in. So let me do that. Well, here's the inside of the machine. It's scary. There is a lot going on in here. It's 1986 era machine. But there's the mechanism. Uh, one belt here, which is still in good shape. And I'm already seeing an issue that I read about online that was common on these particular machines. This plastic guide on the tracks that the cassette carriage rides on. You can see it's cracked right there. That was a common problem on these machines. Not detrimental, but uh, it could make loading a tape a sketchy process. Uh, let me see how the pinch roller feels. Um actually not bad not great but not it's not a Hitachi <laughs> it's not a Hitachi pin troller no that feels okay definitely serviceable still and I might as well turn the uh, loading motor here and see if the mechanism moves and yes that's turning very easily and it looks like it's moving very smoothly I do see that belt does have a bit of a floppiness to it. So I might have to clean or replace that belt. I should definitely have a belt that'll replace that if I need to. Head drum spins freely. So I've already plugged it in. Uh, nothing's happened. Here's the moment of truth turning it on. I'm actually kind of nervous. This thing's old as balls and very, very complex. 
So I'm hoping it doesn't blow up or anything, but let's find out. Okay. Vacuum fluorescent display lights up. It did some weird stuff. Oh, we've got a warning light. A big red warning light. I don't know what that means. Hopefully it just means that... Uh, hopefully it's just saying that because there's no tape in it. We got a burnt out incandescent bulb. That's no big issue. Wow. So I guess all that's left to do is put a tape in this thing. Now I don't have a Betamax tape. I have some beta cam I have some beta cam SP tapes which will physically go in this and load up and play. But beta cam SP tapes are uh, they use a metal particle tape, not a ferric oxide tape. So it's just murder on the head drum if you try to load and play a beta cam SP tape. But I do have one tape. It's not a beta cam SP tape, but it is but it's a first generation beta cam tape. The early beta cam tapes were ferric oxide. And beta cam tapes and beta max tapes were actually inter interchangeable. Uh, either tape would work in either machine. Beta cam tapes were just manu manufactured to a higher specification. But it's the beta cam SP tapes you can't put in this. But I do have one beta cam tape. I'll dig it up and we'll put it in this thing and see if it works. I'm very interested. Here it is. I've been meaning to send this thing to my friend in Quebec who does uh, uh, archival of the old Atlantic television system and Atlantic satellite network. Uh, so this tape has a beta cam recording on it, but that's fine. I just want to see if it'll physically load and transport the tape. Here we go. So we've got that crack in the track plastic. I'm, I'm oddly nervous. I don't think I've ever been this nervous about testing a VCR. Um, but here goes nothing. Oh. It loaded. Warning light's still on. I don't know why. Uh, all we do now is press play. Okay, it briefly started playing and then stopped. It's not liking that. Oh! Oh, she's playing now! Uh, the head drum does not know where it wants to spin. It seems to have reached a constant speed now. The counter is counting way too fast, which is probably okay because it doesn't have because uh, it doesn't have a Betamax recording on the tape. I think I need to clean the head drum. It's making some uh, noises. It's making some friction noises. Holy crap! This thing's playing. It's moving the tape. Does beta scan work? That's the the reverse search and forward search. Beta scan forward is working. Beta scan reverse is working. There's a bit of a clunk clunk clunk. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to hit stop. Okay, and it stopped. I'm going to hit play again. And it's going again. There's uh, nothing on the RF meter. That kind of makes sense. It's probably looking for a beta, beta max recording. Okay, I'm going to hit stop again. And I'm going to see if it fast forwards. It fast forwards. Hit stop. Does it rewind? It rewinds. 
again, kind of nasty noises, but that just might be the head drum needing to be cleaned. Does it eject? Oh my god. Well, you know what I gotta do now. First of all, I've gotta put this tape in my Betacam SX VCR and cue it up to where there's no more video on it. And then put this tape back in this and see if we can frickin' record something. Holy crap. If this thing actually works okay, that's gonna be amazing. But we're very far from finding that out. All right, it's time. It's time to test this thing. So I've got a setup here. I've got the composite output on this camcorder running into the composite input on the VCR. And I've got the composite output on the VCR running into the baby PVM. And look, the video loop through is working. So that part is working on this machine. I put in that tape and I queued it up to a blank portion. I'm going to reset the timer. And I think all there is to do now is hit record. Here we go. Oh, also I cleaned the head drum. A ton of gunk came off it. Look at that. No wonder it struggled to spin up to speed on the first try. But it should be a lot better now. Alright, here we go. Oh, do I have to hold record and play? Yes. Okay, we're recording. This is a record test on the uh, Beta Super, Super Beta Max Hi-Fi VCR. Okay, we rewind. And we hit play. No freaking way! Oh my god! It looks beautiful! No! Get out of here! That's a be that's the most beautiful picture I could have ever hoped for! I gotta watch that again. That went by way too fast. Get out of town! Dude! I have a Betamax VCR! Oh my god! <laughs> it looks beautiful! Holy cow! No! Holy moly! Oh, buttons get a bit stuck. I gotta hook up sound and do that again. That was too good. Well folks, I think that's all I'm gonna show you for now. Holy crap, I cannot believe this thing works. And it seems to work nearly perfectly. Uh, video is perfect, linear audio is perfect. I'm having some issues. It, the hi-fi audio seems to be dropping out a lot. Um, but... I took the tape out and cleaned the head and a bunch more crap came off the head drum which probably shed from that Ampex tape. Ampex's video cassettes were terrible for shedding oxide. Um, and the hi-fi audio seems to be doing better now so maybe with use and with uh, a few more head cleanings uh, and perhaps a better quality tape the hi-fi audio will be fine so I'm not too worried about that. Incandescent indicator lamps burned out. I'll have to see how hard it is to remove the panel so I can replace those. If it's not too hard, I'm definitely interested in replacing those, not with LEDs. But other than that, there is going to be a full video of this thing to come, and I am so excited. My first ever Betamax VCR. It's been a long time coming. And an industrial Betamax VCR. So there you go, folks. Uh, more to come on this wonderful behemoth of a VCR. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you soon.
don't know how many watts that was, though. So it was just a 50 water or... For like... For a VHF television station. Oh. Channel 2 through 13. Oh. And it's, I think this is the excitement for it right here. Huh? Let's see. Well, she wouldn't know what channel it was set to, but anyway. Oh, look at that television. Oh, that's cool. Zenith Chromacolor, they're worth a ton of money. Wow. Because it's Zenith <laughs> and so <laughs> the, There's collectors for everything. Something like that. How much? Well, it restored. A well, few, it, few hundred bucks. Really? It's it, too bad it's all straight down on the top. Yeah, and it, in its current condition, uh, 20 bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I gave it to somebody and I never came back. Now, is that another? Yeah. No, that's not a multi format. Oh, no, it's not a multi format. That's a simple one. I think this is the fancier one. Oh. But it's not a multi format. No. Mm -hmm. 